हेलो एंड वेलकम फ्रेंड्स इन दिस पर्टिकुलर मॉड्यूल आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट यूज ऑफ कंपास फॉर एंगल एंड वेरिंग मेजरमेंट इन लैंड सर्वे we will discuss about definition of angle and bearing types of meridians and bearings expression of bearings conversion of bearings into inclined angle and vice versa as you learn the content you will be able to distinguish bearing from an angle and express the bearings in whole circle bearing reduced bearing and quadrantal bearing systems you will also be able to convert the bearings into inclined angles and vice versa we could be working on some close traverse such as a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 a1 or otherwise we could be working on some open traverse as ab bc cd d whenever we measure horizontal angle it is nothing but the difference in direction of to surveillance it could also be expressed it could also be expressed as amount of relative mutual rotation at that particular junction point the horizontal angles could be exterior angle it could be included or interior angle or it may be indicating deflection of survey line as compared to the direction of just previous line angles are usually expressed in sexagesimal system which is a numeral system having 60 as its base where the circle is divided into 360 degree and each degree is further divided into 60 minutes each of the minutes are further divided into 60 seconds hence in surveying angle can be expressed as degrees minutes seconds as we choose some reference direction with respect to that we can measure an angle up to the survey line under consideration such angle which is measured with reference to some reference direction which is called as meridian is called as bearing hence angle simply indicates the difference in directions whereas bearing indicates the direction of that particular survey line with respect to chosen reference direction called as meridian there can be different types of meridian first meridian is expressed here as true meridian it is nothing but the great circle or a vertical plane passing through given point geographical north pole and geographical south pole it is remaining constant over the period whereas as we consider the magnetic meridian the direction given by 
freely suspended magnetic needle which doesn't which does not have any magnetic influence the direction given is nothing but the magnetic meridian this is not remaining constant but it is changing over the time as we choose some reference direction which could be related with some dominant feature on site conditions so with respect to that we can measure the bearing say for example here there is some building corner with respect to that angle is measured rightward till the survey line as angle is measured with reference to this particular direction it is nothing but the bearing and here this particular direction is randomly chosen arbitrarily chosen and hence this is nothing but arbitrary meridian most of the times true meridian at central place is given as reference direction for a particular region hence the meridian for all other places in that particular region will be parallel to that chosen meridian such selected true meridian is called as grid meridian here as you see the meridian passing through allahabad at 82.5 degree east of greenwich meridian is chosen as grid meridian for india depending on the kind of meridian we refer to bearings can be expressed as true bearing magnetic bearing grid bearing arbitrary bearing so here the way you see this is nothing but the true north so with respect to that with respect to that the bearing measured is nothing but true bearing the lower most of blue portion whereas as we consider the magnetic north as we consider the magnetic north it is it is situated quite far as compared to geographical true north so with respect to that as bearing is measured it is nothing but magnetic bearing the way we discussed earlier certain region can be provided with certain grid meridian which is nothing but the true meridian with respect to that bearings measured are expressed as grid meridian and with respect to arbitrary meridian the bearing chosen bearings measured are termed as arbitrary bearing magnetic bearings can be expressed in various form first one is nothing but whole circle bearing this magnetic bearing is measured in clockwise direction with respect to magnetic north towards the line hence its range is 0 to 360 degrees so in this particular sketch the way you see this is nothing but the magnetic north direction and here we have considered various lines as oa op oc od here for line oa angle subtended with respect to magnetic north direction in rightward manner is nothing but theta 1 hence theta 1 is whole circle bearing of that line similarly if we consider the line od here with respect to magnetic north the angle subtended is theta 4 hence this theta 4 is whole circle bearing of that line od the another form is related with the kind of quadrant that particular survey line is like so 
here as you see this line OA say it's making inclination of theta 1 with respect to magnetic north direction. As it is lying in first quadrant, it is said to have quadrantal bearing as north theta 1 east. Here, say we are dealing with line OB. This line OB is lying in the second quadrant, southeast quadrant, and it is making inclination of theta 2 with respect to magnetic south. Here, this particular direction, magnetic south, is closer as compared to north. Hence, theta 2 is measured with respect to magnetic south. And accordingly, its quadrantal bearing is expressed as south theta 2 east. Similarly, for the line which is lying in this particular southwest quadrant, the quadrantal bearing can be expressed as south theta 3 west. So, the quadrantal bearing is expressed with respect to magnetic north or magnetic south depending on the placement of that particular line. Angle could be measured in leftward direction or rightward direction and would be expressed depending on the direction which is closer to it. This whole circle bearings can easily be converted into quadrantal bearing and vice versa. Whenever the whole circle bearing of the line is converted to quadrantal bearing, it is termed as reduced bearing. So, the way you see here, if a certain line has got whole circle bearing at 0 to 90 degrees, it should be lying in the first quadrant. Hence, the reduced bearing will be same as that of whole circle bearing. Whereas, if the whole circle bearing of a certain line is lying in between 180 to 270 degrees, it will be lying in the third quadrant and hence its reduced bearing can be expressed as whole circle bearing minus 180 degrees. Here, one thing we should note that this is simply telling about the conversion of whole circle bearing into this particular say quadrantal bearing as such. Ultimately, here the value obtained will be same as that of its quadrantal bearing. The bearings can also be expressed the way we move on site. So here we are dealing with open traverse A, B, C, D, E. The magnetic north that is assumed at each of these particular stations could be considered as parallel to each other because we are dealing with plane surface. Hence, as we are moving from A to B, B to C, C to D, etc., it could be treated as the direction of the surface. Hence, bearing measured in the direction of that particular survey will be considered as forebearing. Whereas, as we work in the reverse manner, for a given line in order to measure the bearing, it would be treated as its back bearing. So here, as you see, this is station A, this is station B. With respect to magnetic north, here bearing measured is alpha. Hence, it is for bearing of line AB. Whereas, as we consider the same direction AB, Back bearing of line AB is nothing but beta, which is measured at station B with respect to magnetic north. 
in rightward direction. Needless to say, as both meridians are parallel to each other, the difference in between the fore bearing and back bearing of a line has to be 180 degrees. We can calculate the included angles from bearing as well as we can calculate the bearings from include angles. We'll discuss a few of the cases. Here is line AB and this is line AC. According to given data, for bearing of line AB is beta, whereas back bearing of line AC is nothing but theta. Hence, for bearing of line AC should be equal to theta minus 180 degrees. Hence, angle BAC can be worn out as theta minus 180 minus beta. Here, in the second case, for bearing of line AB is given as theta, whereas for bearing of line BC is nothing but beta. Hence, back bearing of line AB has to be theta plus 180 degrees. Hence, angle included at station B has to be 180 degrees plus beta, sorry, 180 degrees plus theta minus beta. Say here, if the bearings are expressed in terms of quadrantal system, say for line AB, four bearing is north theta east, whereas for line AC, four bearing is south beta east, Hence, angle BAC can be worked out by deducting sum of theta and beta from 180 degrees. Similarly here, for line BA, the bearing measured is south theta west, whereas for line BC here, bearing measured is south beta east. Hence, the included angle at B should be sum of theta and beta. Here, four bearing of line AB is theta 1. Hence, back bearing of this line AB must be equal to theta 1 plus 180 degrees. Here, this alpha dash can be determined as 360 degrees minus back bearing of line AB. It can also be expressed as 180 minus theta 1 here. Hence, the four bearing of line BC is nothing but theta 2, which is difference, which has to be difference in between value of alpha and alpha dash. Hence, it can be worked out as alpha plus theta 1 minus 180 degrees. In this particular sketch, for bearing of line BC is theta 2. Hence, its back bearing should be 180 degrees plus theta 2. Here, this alpha dash has to be equal to 360 minus 180 plus theta 2. Hence, the four bearing of line CD will be equal to beta plus theta 2 minus 180 degrees. Let's solve one more problem. For close traverse, we are provided with three included angles and bearing of a line. 
we are expected to determine bearing of remaining lines. As we are provided with the bearing of line CD at north 27 degree 50 minute east, we can start our computations from that particular line. So, for bearing of line CD is north 27 degree 50 minute east. Hence, as we know, for a given line, difference in between fore bearing and back bearing should be of 180 degrees. Hence, simply that north and east will be replaced by south and west. Hence, the back bearing of line CD will be equal to south 27 degree 50 minute west. Fore bearing of DA Fore bearing of DA should be equal to angle at D minus back bearing of CD. As we work out the same, it comes to be north 18 degrees 41 minute west. Hence, back bearing of line DA should be south 18 degrees 41 minute east. As we wish to work out the fore bearing of AB, these steps can be followed and accordingly its value can be worked out as south 80 degrees 3 minute west. We cannot move ahead with the similar steps. Hence, we have to make use of included angle at C. For the given traverse, having four sides, the sum of included angle should be equal to 360 degrees. Hence, as we deduct the known angles from 360 degrees, we get the included angle at C as 15 degree 31 minutes. Hence, four bearing of BC can be worked out by making use of this value now and it comes to be north 43 degree 21 minute east. Let's make use of this particular included angle value that we have worked out and as we further calculate the fore bearing of line CD, it comes to be north 27 degree 50 minute east. This value and the value from where we started with is one and same. Hence, we have performed these arithmetical calculations correctly. This is another problem. It is giving certain data related with these particular survey lines and we are expected to determine certain parameters here. So, depending on the given data, first thing is back bearing of AB is south 41 degree 7 minute west, whereas fore bearing of this particular line BC is south 55 degree 26 minute east. Hence, this deflection angle at B has to be equal to 180 degrees minus into bracket 41 degrees 7 minute plus 55 degree 26 minute which comes to be 83 degree 27 minute rightward. For line BC, the back bearing is north 55 degree 26 minute west as we refer to the given data. Hence, four bearing of line CD can be worked out by deducting included angle at C and back bearing of BC from 180 degrees 
it comes to be south 45 degree 18 minute west. Four bearing of line D is south 12 degree 47 minute east. Hence, the north azimuth, which is nothing but the true bearing, can be worked out by deducting this particular 12 degree 47 minute from this particular 180 degree in order to get the azimuth of line D. We have to compute the included angle at E which can be computed by deducting back bearing of D and fore bearing of EF from 180 degrees which comes to be 80 degrees 25 minute. In the same manner we can work out this included angle at F as 99 degrees 46 minute. So the way we saw the calculations computations are depending on the data given it's better to draw some sketch showing the position of the station magnetic north south direction respective bearings and if included angle given it makes our calculation easier and there is no necessity to visualize all the parameters that are related with that particular traverse. So I hope the concepts that we have discussed here are clear to you. I thank you for your attention. As we move ahead, we'll discuss about the tool that we use in order to measure the bearing which is nothing but prismatic compass and surface compass. So friends, bye till then. Thank you. Thank you very much. I wish you very happy learning.